In this video, we're going to be exploring how to use the Linux operating system of this computer, or one very similar to it, um, in an effective way. And we're going to be learning some basic commands that we can use within a terminal window. So let's start off by looking at this screen. So the computer that you have may have a slightly different background. It's possible that you have one that's got a jellyfish on it. Okay, you've managed to successfully log in, and now it's time to start using this computer, some of the capabilities that make it different. This is not a Windows computer. This is not a Mac. It has a Linux operating system on it. Linux is the operating system that's on about 90% of the computers in the world, including almost certainly the phone that you carry around in your pocket. So let's start looking at what we can do here. If we go down to the lower left hand corner, you see a little icon of a bird. Okay? And when you click on it, then you'll see a menu. Okay? And you can use this menu. See, there are lots of submenus that come off these menus here. And and so forth. You can kind of look around to see what kind of software is already available on this computer. So there are a few things that we're going to want to use here. Okay, Yours may be slightly different from what I have here, but it's going to be very, fairly similar. The thing that I want to pay attention to is system tools. Okay, So here under system tools, we're going to be looking at the terminal window. Okay, This is the way we're going to be interacting with the operating system. And this is basically peeling back the curtain, okay, so to speak. Um, a lot of people these days, when they use computers, they're dealing with it through, in a mediated way through a graphical user interface. So what we want to do is to be able to control the computer in a different way. So let's open up this LX terminal and see what it looks like. Okay, so what we see here is a window, okay, and the window that pops open has at the top you can see written in green a name that's my name and then we have the at sign and then we have Lulu. Okay, Lulu is the name of my computer. Nancy is the name under which I logged in. Okay, and then after that we have my prompt. Your prompt may look a little different but this is what I'm going to see every time um, I have a prompt when I see this symbol here, this tells me that the computer is waiting for me to issue commands to it. So you're going to see something similar. Probably what yours says is user at and then engineering followed by some digits. 052103, something like that. Okay, This is the prompt and you can type stuff. So you know from having worked with computers before that there's a whole structure of how you interact with it um, that is set up where you put files in various folders. Okay, and that's supposed to help you organize your stuff. Now really it's a good it's good that you know about that because that is how stuff is organized, but we're going to be looking at it in a slightly different way. You can think of the folders as directories. In fact that's what they're called in Linux. They're called directories and directories contain things. Directories may contain other directories, they may contain files. Okay, so we're going to be navigating around the structure. The file structure is like a tree. Okay, so the first thing we want to know is well, where are we? Where are we? All right, so the way we can find out that is we can type PWD, which is Print Working Directory. That's what it stands for, and that tells me where I am. Okay, so the slashes are the separators for the different levels of the directory structure. And by default, when I log in, I am in what's called my home directory. Okay, home, and then Nancy, that's my username. So if you type PWD to your prompt, you're probably going to see slash home slash user. Okay, now, what's in my directory? What's there? I can't see anything. I don't see any folders, right? But I can list the contents of the directory by typing ls. All right, now, I happen to have a lot of things in my directory. You might, you're going to probably have different things if you type ls, but let me just talk to you about what we see here. So what I have here is a bunch of things that are in different colors. I have the blue. The blue, those are directories. Okay. The greens are files. I have a variety of files here. And then I have purple, that's a picture, an image. And then I have one file that's a compressed file. It's a zip file. It's where I bundle a whole bunch of files together and I compress them down, shrink them down, 
compact them. I can't look at them when they're compacted like that. But then it's a good way to take something really bulky and kind of shrink it down so that it can be sent to somebody else, moved someplace else. And then if I really want to look at what's inside, I unzip the file. Okay, so that's something we can talk about later. But I just want you to know about these different things. All right, now let's say I want to do some things. I want to move to a different directory. Like I'm here in my home directory. Let's say I want to know what's inside the directory that's marked ENR200. Okay, I'm going to move into my directory ENR200. The way I can do that is by typing CD, which means change directory. And then since I want to go from where I am now into a directory that's one level down from where I am, I can just type ENR200. Okay, and that will put me into the directory. Now I type PWD, where am I? I'm in home, Nancy, ENR200. I'm down in ENR200. I can see what's in this directory by typing ls, and I have a whole ton of stuff in here, okay? Lots of things. Too much for me to look at all at once. It won't all fit in the screen. There's so many different files. I see pictures here. I like to have more of a sense of what I have here, so I'm going to type ls, and then I'm going to put a bar. This is a vertical bar, and I'm going to type more. And when I do that, it's only it'll list all the contents one screen at a time. Okay, so you see the more at the bottom of the screen. I'm now looking at the contents of the directory in alphabetical order, like I was before, but it's only showing me one screen list, so I can kind of look at it. If I want to see the next screen worth in the list, I hit the space bar, and then I do it again. And that it took me three screenful to look at this to see all the contents of what I have here. Okay, and so that's a way to look at the contents in where you're not just scrolling through everything and only seeing the bottom of the list. Um, so that's one thing we can do. Now I'm in this directory right now. Let's see. I want to go back to the home directory. I can type cd dot dot, and that will take me up one level. All right. And now when I do pwd, here I am. I'm back in my home directory. Okay. I can go down into another directory. Let's say I want to go into ENR 101. Okay, that's a directory. And now I can do LS of what's in there. There's not very much. There's some stuff, some directories, another thing. Now let's say I want to go from this directory, ENR 101, which is one level below my home directory. And I want to go back into ENR 200, which is also one level below my home directory. This is how I can do it. CD dot dot takes me up back one level. Then I can put forward slash. ENR 200. Okay, and now that will move me up, but then down again one level. Now I'm in ENR 200. Okay, now let's say I go back up, CD, dot dot, and I say, okay, what's available? There are all these different directories. I can now type CD, and let's say I want to go into uh, new plot. Okay, G, right, N, I don't have to type the whole thing. If I hit the tab key, it will complete the word new plot because there's nothing else, no other directory that starts with GM. Okay, so I can then move into that directory, right? I'm gonna go back up now, back to where I was. Now let's say I want to move into games. Okay, games two. CD, I have to capitalize games, G. A, and then I type uh, hit tab to complete. It will only complete up to the end of the word games because that's as far as I can go before I have to either specify a one or a two. So now if I, I hit tab again, nothing's happening. I hit tab again, and then it tells me what my options are, one or two. Now I hit one and I hit tab again. It will complete. The tab key is really useful for completing. Right? You don't have to always type out everything fully. So uh, here I am in games one. I'm going to go up again, cd dot dot. Okay, I'm back at the main level again. All right, pwd, where am I? I can go up another directory, cd dot dot. Okay, now I'm in just home. What's there? Okay, Nancy, that's it. That's all. There's nothing else. I'm the only user on my computer, so that's all I have. Okay, now I am in this directory that, oops, okay, I talked about that. Okay, if I, something like that happens, I just type Control, Control C and it gets me out. Okay, but PWD, 
right? I'm in home. I want to go back to my home directory. If I ever want to get back to my home directory, no matter where I am, if I just type plain old CD, it's going to put me in my home directory. Okay, so here we are. Now, those directory, that directory structure that you see is here, but it got put here somehow, right? So this is how we do that. We want to make a directory. Let's say I want to make a directory, okay? Something new, some directory, we want to put some stuff. So to make a directory, I'm in my home directory right now, okay? I want to make a new directory here, mkdir, mix a directory, mkdir, and let's say I want to call it Christmas, uh, Christmas, like that, I'll like that, and now if I do ls, the directory called Christmas is there in the list, okay, I can navigate into it, I just have to type capital C, and then I hit complete, it's the only directory that starts with a capital C, so I'm good, okay. And, and yes, Linux is case sensitive, so you have to pay attention to this thing. So now I'm in this directory, Christmas. Now when I type ls, there's nothing in it because I just made this directory, but I can put some things in it. I can put files in it. There's a couple of different ways I can put files in here. I can make a file, empty one. I'm gonna call it Rudolph, okay? Touch. Now when I type ls, there's a file in there called Rudolph. What's in Rudolph? Well, I can find out what's in Rudolph by doing this. I can say um, more Rudolph. And it will show me a screen full of Rudolph. Well, there's nothing in Rudolph, so nothing is returned. Okay? I can put things in Rudolph by using this, this um, command echo. I'll show you what I do. So if I type echo and I put uh, reindeer, okay, if I type that, what happens? The word reindeer is printed to the screen. Okay. Now, let's say I want to put that word reindeer into the file Rudolph. This is how I do it. I type echo reindeer and then I say arrow, okay, Rudolph. So it's put the word reindeer into the file Rudolph. Okay. Now when I do more Rudolph, there's the word reindeer. Okay. Now I want to put red nose, okay? I want to put the word red nose in, into that file Rudolph. If I type echo red nose, and then I put this Rudolph, what's going to happen is red nose, red nose, should be red nose, sorry, red nose, Rudolph. If I do that, then what's going to happen is red nose will overwrite the contents of Rudolph and the reindeer will be gone. It'll just be red nose. Well, I want to add that on, actually. I'd like to put red nose in after, okay? So this is how I do it. Rudolph, like that. And now when I do more Rudolph, I have reindeer followed by red nose. Okay, so now there's two lines in there. And I could keep doing that. Echo red nose. Uh, I don't want to do red nose. Uh, let's see, Santa. Let's put Santa in, okay? I want to append it to this file, and now I do more, Rudolph, like that, and now I have three lines, okay? So this is a way that we can make files, and we can just keep doing this, keep appending, but it's a little tedious, it's a little limited. I don't have any way to go back and edit it, like maybe I'd like it to be red nose reindeer instead of reindeer red nose, you know, and I don't have a way to do that here. So we need to have other ways of changing the contents of files, right? So let's talk about what we can do. Um, typically what happens, like what we're doing right now is we're interacting with the computer in this window, this LX terminal window, which is, you, we use commands at the command line to manipulate files, okay, and do stuff with them. But we'd like to do other things too. So I'm gonna shrink this down, this window, just change the size a little bit. And now what I'd like to do is use a file editor where I can open up a file and actually navigate within the file and make changes to it. Um, and what I'm going to use is Featherpad. Featherpad is a free version of Notepad, which a lot of people have used. Okay, And you can use it to open lots of just basic text files. And that's what we're doing here, Featherpad. So I'm going to open, I can open Featherpad here from this menu or I can open Featherpad here. 
at the command line, and this is the way I do it. Well, first of all, I can check to make sure the feather pad is actually installed on this computer. We know it is already because we saw it in the menu. I type which feather pad. Okay, there it is. Okay, the executable is in user bin feather pad. Okay, great, so we know it's there. So if you type which and then the name of a piece of software, that's when you'll find out if it's installed on the computer, all right? Now, I'm gonna type feather pad, and if I just type feather pad like this, what's gonna happen? Okay, I get a window up. This is where I can look at files, but notice what's happened. Over here in my command window, I can't type anything anymore, all right? I can't do anything here because I have launched Featherpad from this window, okay? I won't be able to do anything in this window until I close down um, my editing window. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna close it down. Okay, now I get back my prompt. Now I can type stuff. So the problem is that the window is captured by this process, right? I'd like to be able to still use the window to do stuff, to issue commands while I have Featherpad open. So the way I'm gonna do that is by typing featherpad space ampersand and that will launch featherpad okay and back here in this window I can still use it if I go return I have my prompt back okay I'm in business so here I am I've got both of these windows going I'm going to come up here and resize this window I want to make it a little bit more narrow a little bit taller and put it right here side by side with my terminal window okay what I'd like to do now, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna use the file opener. I'm gonna open what I'd like to open in the Christmas directory, I wanna open Rudolph, okay? So here it is, okay? And now I can navigate using the keys on my keypad. I can use the arrow keys, okay? I can go around here, I can use the cursor just to move around, I can click where I need to. If I want to use the editing commands, these are very commonly used. You probably are familiar with things. Let's see, edit, where is it? You can do paste, cut, copy. Lots of people have used these using Microsoft Word or you've used um, email utility that uses these things. So this won't be difficult to do. So I can go in here and I can put some other stuff in here, candy cane, okay. And then we can talk about, um, let's see, this is all kind of the secular Christmas stuff, but we can also talk about nativity, okay, uh, Christ, and we can talk about Savior, uh, let's see, Gloria in excelsis, okay, get some Latin in there, there. okay, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, okay, anyway, so we got glory, we got all these Christmas things, some of them are very secular, some of them are more Christian, so anyway, here we got some Christmas stuff, um, and the file is still called Rudolph. Anyway, so we have this file, and now we can save it. File, save, all right, I'm gonna save this, uh, yeah, we'll just save it, we'll just save it. Okay, so we saved it, and now if I come back over here to this window and I do more Rudolph, now I've got some other stuff in there, okay? In fact, I even have a blank line at the bottom, right? Which I didn't necessarily wanna have in there, but there it is, okay, I can remove it and save it again, file, save. Okay, so I've, I've, I can do stuff, I can go around and I can edit the file as I, as I wish. Here, okay, so let's now talk about what we can do with files. So here we have this file, Rudolph. It's all alone in this directory, right? It's the only one. I would like to move this file, okay, to someplace else, but then I wanna do other things too, like maybe I wanna rename it, okay? All these things I'd like to do with this file. I wanna be able to do different things. So let's talk about how to rename files first. That's the simplest thing. The way we rename files is by moving them. So I type MV and then I type, I start typing Rudolph. I can hit tab because it's the file in here. It completes the name. And then let's see, I want to name this file something else. What will I call it? Let's see. Um, I'm going to call it Slay very much in this Christmas theme here, Slay. Okay, move it there. So now I just have that file called Slay, right? I've moved it, I just renamed it, it's in the same directory. Let's say I wanna move Slay now. Well, let's see, first before I move Slay, let's make a copy of it, okay? Let's copy Slay 
and let's call the new file, um, oh gee, I don't know what to call it, candy cane? I already have candy cane as a thing. Um, uh, let's see, um, I'll call it uh, nativity, okay, even though that's a word in the file, that's okay, we'll just call it that. Now, I look here and now I have two files, one called nativity and one called slay, right? They have the same contents, right, if I do, more slay there it is if i do more nativity it's the same okay we have the two files now let's say i want to move the nativity file out of here okay i want to move it to my home directory up one level okay i can do it like this mv nativity and then i can type dot dot which brings me up one level and then i can put the file up there on that level and it will move it it will still have the same name or I could take this as an opportunity to change the name I could call it something else I could call it Savior okay something like that okay and that would change the name of the file as I moved it let's do that okay so I go to CD dot dot and then I do LS and there's the file called Savior right there okay right so there we go um, now the other thing I can do is I want to move, well, let's say I want to move this file back into the Christmas directory. So that's how I do it. I do MV Savior, okay, and I want to put it in the Christmas directory. So I type C, capital C. I can hit tab right then because that's the only directory that starts with a capital C. And I want to call it Savior in that directory. I don't have to type the word Savior. If I'm not going to actually change the file name, I can just put dot. And when it gets moved into the Christmas directory, which I'm going to now navigate to, okay, there it is, Savior, okay, it's there again. All right, so those are moving files and copying files. And now another thing that we can do is we can remove a file. I'm going to remove the file slay, okay, boom, it's gone. Now, one thing I want to just mention is there is no recycling bin. Once you delete something, it's gone. So you have a lot of power. We don't have a recycling bin because a recycling bin takes up space on the computer, right? If you trash something, if it's done, it's done. So keep that in mind and be very careful about what you delete, all right? All right, so that's working with files in a basic way. There's more stuff we can do. Let me show you some other things. So let's say I copy Savior and I have another file that I call Savior1. Eh, no, I better call it something else. Let's call it uh, Safe. Okay, there we go. All right, and then I would like to list the files uh, in this directory that start with an S. Okay, how do I do that? Well, S is the thing that's in common with them, right? And everything else varies. Okay, so if I type ls s asterisk, asterisk means wildcard. It means any symbols are acceptable to, to complete this, including no symbols, right? So if I type ls s star, it's going to list both files because they both start with s, right? Now if I say ls s a b star, it's only going to list savior because that's the only file that has that string. Here's something else I can do. ls star i star, okay? That means Show me the files that have an I in them anywhere. Okay, there it is, Savior. It's the only one. Okay, this is a very powerful thing. So let's say I go up a level and I'm in my home directory. And you may recall there are a whole lot, lot of things here. If I go down into ENR 200, there were even more things. Like if I do a list, there's this huge number of things. Let's say I want to just look at the files that are of a certain type. Okay, because the extension is usually shown with a dot followed by some kind of Usually three letter string, but it doesn't have to be. Let's say I want to just look at the files that end in .tex, okay? So I type star .tex, and there they are, okay? It's a way for me to find them. Let's say I want to say all the files that start with hello, hello star, okay? Then I get to see fewer of them. It helps me to organize and find out what's in a given directory. These are powerful things, okay? So other commands that we want to know about <coughs> in using this. Um, one of the things that you're going to want to know about is uh, how to 
change your password, okay? Now, I'm just gonna mention this. This actually is in the documentation that you have. So you type P-A-S-S-W-D, -S -S okay, to change your password. Now, you have to be very careful when you do this. It's fine if you wanna do it, but there, it's not like where you, you know, some of these other things where there's two-way verification, then there's a backup account and all this. If you change your password and you forget what it is, that's gonna be a big problem because there's no way for you to get in um, we do have super user possibilities of going in and maybe getting your files out, but you really, there are all these sort of extra safeguards that you encounter on other computers are not there. Um, it means that the, the computer tends to run faster. It has more space on it to do stuff. Um, it's less bloated, you know, but you do have these things where you're gonna have to take more responsibility for what you do, okay, so anyway. If you look at the, the documentation that we provided to you, then you'll see that command. If there's any command that you're interested in learning more about, you can type M-A-N and then the name of the command. Let me type P-A-S-S-W-D, okay? And then you're put into this window where you have access to the manual, the user's manual, okay? And it explains what it's, it's about. It tells you about various options because lots of times when you type a command, there are options that you can include when you do when you put it in there are different things you can do um, but you're in this manual environment and to leave you have to hit Q and that will put you back where you were okay a couple more things that are useful control L will clear your screen okay that's kind of nice control P will show you the last thing that you typed if you want to know the thing before that control P again Control P again, and then you can hit enter anytime you want, okay? This will save you on typing as well. It's another way to help speed things up, to make more efficient, to be more accurate. You're gonna probably want to execute certain commands repeatedly, you know, when you're doing stuff, and this is a way to make it so you don't have to do as much typing. Okay, um, some other stuff, um, screenshots. To be able to take a screenshot is very, very useful. In fact, the first assignment in this class that you're taking, um, you're going to have to be able to, to take a screenshot and upload it to Canvas. So let me talk to you about how to do that. Um, so let's say I want to take a screenshot of part of the screen. Here's how we do it. We type S-C-R-O-T S, okay? And then you, if you want to give a particular name to the file where you're going to put the screenshot, that would, this would be the time to do it. So let me say I'm going to call this uh, uh, shot one, okay? And I'm going to put dot .png, okay? It's important to put that in, the dot .png, so that you, you don't have to do it, but if you don't do it, you won't be able to examine the file later, like look at the image that you took, okay? I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to put the dot .png because it's going to make things easier if I do. So I do that. Okay. Now notice I've got my cursor here, right? Okay. When I enter, put enter in, my cursor changes to crosshairs. So what I do with this is I click, I move it to where I want to start making my screenshot. Let's say I want to come over here and just grab these words that are in this uh, file over here, this file looker, this feather pad, I just want to get the words. Okay, so I'm going to place my cursor just above reindeer, and that's going to mark the northwest corner of the rectangle that I'm going to draw. So I click on the left side of my touchpad, and then I pull down and grab, okay, and the place I let go is going to mark the southeast corner. Okay, so I've positioned this now. That's where I want to take my screenshot. Okay, so I'm going to let go, and then I get my prompt back, and that tells me that I have a screenshot now. So if I do ls, okay, I'm in this 200 directory. There's a whole ton of files. Let me see if I can type sh, tab complete. There it is. There it is. Okay, so I've got it. Now, I would like to see what it looks like. Okay, so I can do that by using this program, lx image dash qt, okay? And I'm gonna put ampersand in because I would like to launch this process and be able to continue to use my window, right? So I do that, and here is my image viewer, okay? It looks a lot like Featherpad, right? 
that's not what we have. I'm just going to move this up here. Okay. By the way, if you want to uh, reduce the size of a window, all you okay, this file does not exist. Okay, well, it's because I did something with it. I'm just going to I moved it right. That's why I renamed it and moved it. That's fine. I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce this by going up to the top of the window and clicking on the um, horizontal line that will make the window go down here to the the tool the taskbar at the bottom and I can get it back anytime I want it just to click on it okay that's feather pad down here all right what I want to focus on now is my image viewer so here here's my image viewer I'm going to click on file and I want to open what do I want to open well I'm gonna I, where did I put this thing okay remember where it is I'm in the directory ENR 200 so I'm going to go into that directory and where is it shot one okay Dot PNG. The only things that it's showing me here are JPG and PNG files. Okay, those are all image files. If I did not have PNG or JPG as part of the name of this file, I probably would not be able to look at it. It wouldn't even be shown as an option here in the list. Okay, so here we go. All right, so there it is. There it is. That's what it looks like. Okay, and I can take this and I can upload it to Canvas if I want to. Right? I can just take this file. Now, if I would like to um, take a screenshot of an entire screen, all right, of an entire window, like let's say I want to get capture this terminal window, the way I would do it is as follows. Okay, I'm going to use Control P to get back the um, command that I used before. Okay, not that one, not that one. Oh yeah, right. These are the previous two. I'm just still typing Control P. Here's the one I want. Okay, I am going to modify it though. I'm going to backspace and change the name of this. I'll call it shot2.png. Okay. All right. Now, as before, enter. Okay. Now I have crosshairs. Now, instead of selecting where I'm going to put the northwest corner, I would like to capture this window that I'm in right now. All right. The window that I'm in right now, the way that I do that, is I click on the left side of my touchpad. All right, and now I should have a screenshot of this window. Let's check. Okay, I'm going to go over here. Well, first of all, let's make sure we have it. Let's take ls shot. Let's put sh star. There they are, both of the screenshots that I've taken, right? All right, I'm going to go over to my image viewer and I'm going to say I want to open and look at the other one. There it is. There it is. That's the window. The whole thing was captured, okay, by clicking on the left side of the touchpad. And that's what you're going to need to do for the assignment, right? You're going to need to type some stuff into the window and then take a screenshot of that window and upload it to Canvas. Okay, so that's the basic stuff on using this. There are a few other commands, but I think this is enough to get you going. We're going to be using the command window to use LaTeX. And so interacting with the command window is a good way to use LaTeX. And if you take further courses in our program, you're going to be using the command window and Linux extensively. And hopefully you'll find this fun and just an alternate way of doing things. For a lot of these things, there are graphical alternatives. I will tell you that the image viewer, there is no, it doesn't appear in the menu. So the only way you're going to be able to interact with this is by using lximage-qt. All right. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you.